It's essential if you want to understand how the internet works to understand the idea of the client server model. Um, the client server model is not complicated, but it's a way of organizing a pattern uh, for designing the web and the internet uh, that is pervasive, that is very common uh, for software on the web. And uh, client server software consists of a, a piece of software for the client and a piece of software for the server. So how does that work? So the piece of software that is the server software sits there and waits for the clients to come in the door and ask for something. Think of it a little bit uh, like a barista who's always on, always ready, just waiting for someone to ask for something. Uh, he then goes and does whatever is requested, grabs a coffee, grabs a particular kind of coffee, grabs a tea, whatever the client has asked for, he goes and grabs that and delivers it to the client. That's it. That's the basics of what a server client model looks like. Um, now, often we think of these as being kind of for the web, uh, a server that is a corporate server, for example. So Quinnipiac as a university has a room full of web servers. Um, these are, this is web software, server software that's on usually machines that are designed explicitly for uh, serving stuff to the web. So you might request a particular URL and then the server delivers that file to the client. On the web, the client software is called a browser. It's something like Internet Explorer or Firefox or Chrome. And the server software can be a number of things and we'll talk a little bit about later about the very various kinds of server software that exists. Normally these are on machines that are designed to be servers. Um, nothing. There's nothing special about server machines um, particularly any machine can be a server machine in fact you can set up your own machine to serve to, with a with web server software so that it can be a server um, however generally web servers have some unique characteristics they as you can see generally don't have a screen because they don't need it um, they generally have a lot of a lot of uh, particular kinds of of architectures so that they can serve files quickly and have a lot of memory and and large hard drives and that sort of thing and they're generally connected to the internet 24 7. Um, we passed over something uh, called ports this idea that each of these machines actually has a number of kind of doors that go into them numbered doors uh, traditionally for example if you're asking for something from the web you'd go in the door the port uh, numbered 80 um, and for other services like mail or ftp you'd go into a different port. So um, it's worth thinking about that, that um, one machine might be running uh, a number of different kinds of server software for FTP, for the web, for mail, and that these are usually behind doors that traditionally have uh, kind of numbers that are, are consistent. So for the web, generally when you ask for something from a server for the web, you go to door number 80, you say, please give me a particular page, and then the server gives you that page.